education in this country. It's somehow looking back into the, the past. Since the day the country help. was founded. Start by talking about community and some of the things that are actually deeper than politics. I'm going to start by talking about community and some of the things that are actually deeper than politics. It's the sort of bottom-up change that affects how people live. And the creation of communities is probably the most important thing affecting how people live. Now, over the past 20 or 30 years, we've been through a period of tremendous demographic change. 43 million people move every year, and basically they move outwards. But in all this movement, and all this seeking of opportunity, a lot of the times what we lose is the bonds of community. We've become a nation where we socialize with people like ourselves, we watch TV shows with people like ourselves, we hang out with people like ourselves. And that has led to radical sorts of inequality. The most famous is income inequality. You've seen income inequality being passed down to children. If you grow up in a home making $96,000 a year, your chances of getting through college are one in two. If you grow up in a home making $36,000 a year, your chances are one in 17. So the home you're born into now makes a big deal difference in how you're gonna do in life. And that income segmentation has led to lifestyle segmentation. It used to be, in 1964, that rich people and poor people had basically the same lifestyle patterns, divorce rates, all that stuff. That's no longer true. High school educated people now have twice the divorce rates as college educated people. They have twice the obesity rates, half the voting, half the blood donation, half the voluntary activity. We are now segmented by lifestyle. And that's as people move in with people like themselves. So these are all problems caused by changing social norms. And we've spent a long time dealing with these problems, but we have not dealt with them successfully. And I think it's because we've looked at the problem the wrong way. And to put it in a crude way, we've looked at problems as economic problems. To me, if we're really going to solve these problems, it's actually not thinking like an economist that's going to get us there. It's thinking like, well, like Oprah. <laughs> we're in the middle of a, a, a tremendous intellectual revolution. And it's, a, it's an intellectual revolution that takes place partly in neuroscience, partly in cognitive science, but partly in behavioral economics, psychology. And one of the things they found is that we have two systems in the human brain. And because scientists are incredibly creative, they call these two systems System 1 and System 2. <laughs> and what we're learning is that System 1, which is the unconscious section, is much, much, much more important. The human mind can take in 11 million pieces of information in a minute, of which it can be conscious of 40. So all the rest is happening below the level of awareness. There's a scientist at the University of Virginia who says, that, imagine a small baby riding an elephant. The baby is the stuff we're conscious of. The elephant is all the rest. And if you're going to think about how people behave and how you want them to behave, and you're going to think about social problems, you better pay attention to the elephant, because that's who we really are. And so really what I've tried to describe, it's thinking about community the way we now understand the brain really works, which is the soft way, the soft side, emphasizing emotion. In my world, economics is the gateway to policymaking. If you can't count it, if you can't put an equation around it, it's very hard to take seriously. It's just a source of frustration to me that we don't think in this way when we're talking about community, because if you spend as much time as I do around politicians, this is what they're good at. And yet when they talk about policy, it's all economics and it's all the hard stuff. It's like they become different people. And as a result, I think we ill-define the problems we have, and we ignore the things uh, that are really the solutions. And it seems like soft, gushy stuff off on the side, but it's actually key to community building. That means thinking about things like mentoring programs. We've got all these army of young people wanting to volunteer for this and that. Having arts programs 
In the schools, it illuminates the brain. In the community, it educates the emotions. Arts educate the emotions. Another key to community building is narrative. The communities that do well have a narrative about the place. A shared history, a shared sense of the future, a story they can all tell with certain figures and heroes. And if you're going to use government to rebuild society, to create the sort of interconnections which actually create happiness and create healthy communities, it seems to me you have to adopt that softer side, that softer way of thinking. And that's really how social change happens. So anyway, thank you very much.